As Olympic fever takes hold over fans across the globe, there is an Olympic sport of sorts rarely if ever making headlines. This sport doesn't involve the athletes though. Rather, this competition takes place by fans attending the games. It's Olympic pin trading, and collectors work almost as hard as the athletes themselves. I think about the pin collecting as the exchange and finding the pin. It gets people talking together, and I think it's the unofficial sport of the Olympics. We're, no, we're certainly nothing compared to the athletes, so our, our mentality probably is very close. Don Bigsby is president of Olympin, the world's largest Olympic collection club recognized by the IOC. It brags 500 members and spans 30 nations. Pam Litz is an avid collector and sits on the board at Olympin. You know, we're collectors and we want to have a way to connect. I know what you're thinking. Pins? Really? But this is a serious tradition, one that I learned firsthand having worked many Olympics at USA House. It is thought that pin collecting began as far back as 1896 at a game in Athens, Greece. The pins were cardboard and were used to identify athletes, officials, and media. It is thought that some began to collect these pins, and thus a new kind of sport was born. Pam has been an avid collector since 1984. Oh, I started collecting pins in Los Angeles in 1984 when the games were here. I was a volunteer and I saw these groups of people kind of huddled together and I, I you know, kind of poked my nose in there and looked you know, and I said, well, what, what are they doing there? Because they had, you know, some laid out in front of them and they're switching back and forth and they said, Oh, they're trading pins. It's a, it's a big deal. So I went and stood in line, uh, invested my $20, which for four pins, you know, and then uh, put them on. And then I thought, you know, well, now what do I do? That's when the games begin. What you do is start looking for the best and most desired pins out there. And there are a lot to pursue. There are sponsor pins. There are national committee pins, media pins, pins from organization committees vying to host future games, security pins, and commemorative pins. For collectors, getting the gold could mean a rare or hard to find pin. For others, there's a financial incentive. I went to a ski show and there was a man there selling pins. And he had pins from Lake Placid 1980, some of the same ones I did. And he had prices on them like $60, $80, $30. I'm going, whoa. I mean, I'm not in this for the money, but I didn't realize these things were so valuable. Of course, trading pins during a pandemic hasn't been easy. Both the Tokyo Games and now Beijing have made it hard on collectors, but it hasn't stopped them. There's nothing like being at the games, as we know. And to, even to be trading by mail or internet, at home, it doesn't come close to comparing. It's not the events that draw me to the games, it's the atmosphere at the games and being out in the street with hundreds of thousands of people from 200 countries, it's an education. I mean, I, I've learned things that wouldn't have interested me at all when I was in school. And now I learn it because it's part of doing the hunt.